Yellow's got green is out. It's time for the Boyd Speedway Podcast, brought to you by Cindy's Choice. We are all geared up here on the Boyd's Boyd Speedway Podcast. I just said it three times, Larry. <laughs> Boyd's Speedway Podcast, produced by Cindy's Choice, here with Larry Dismukes, General Manager. Is that your official title over there, Larry? Uh, that's what they call it. I uh, pretty much do anything. I cook barbecue, I pick up trash, and promote the races. So pretty much anything has got to be done, other than the track. Riley handles the track. Awesome. Well, this is really awesome. I was really looking forward, because we've already kind of conducted some interviews and Mm -hmm. kicked off the the podcast i mean you know john schneider we got to talk to and yeah great interview and then it was really cool for me because i got to set in with the cochran boys racing Mm -hmm. uh Cannon Great and story Carden, yep. and that was special to me because Rick Worley and Son is their sponsor, which is a Cindy's Choice client. But now this is special to me, Larry, and you know this is I'm about to hand the wheel over. Hmm. That this is I, we don't need two hosts. It's not a race car going down the straightaway. Yeah, it's speedway. much more appropriate for Larry uh, to be the one talking to these racers because he knows racing. But I want to dig in. Because uh, a, a little bit, because I was interviewing a race family, a first okay. generation race family. Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of look at Russell, I mean, Russell Racing. Mm-hmm. Y'all are a race family, but in a we different kind of way. But let's just start with, you know, who is Larry Dismukes? Uh, we all know who, who Emerson is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the racing part of the family. <laughs> exactly. And I laugh because, you know, Emerson Russell. Uh, and, it, and I have to just I just have to tell the story because Emerson has been such an encourager of mine. Mm-hmm. I was out there with this big dream, this big vision of something unique and different that I wanted to do. And Emerson's done some unique and different big things. Absolutely. So he could kind of see my vision and just, you know, was a consistent encouragement of mine. But, you know, I was always frustrated because I was like, man, I wish there was something you know, we could work on together. Mm -hmm. I would love to, and, but, you know, I wouldn't bring in a whole lot to the table back then. So it was kind (laughs) of hard to work that out, but he saw it and it just meant the world to me when, you know, the buzz was out there about Emerson and he didn't hesitate. Uh, You know, as soon as he picked up the phone, he said, here, get, I'm going to send you Larry's number, call Larry, get over there. And I'm like, well, who's this Larry guy? You know, he's, well, that's uh, my son-in-law. And um, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is interesting. And, you know, it, it all went from there. And, you know, the, the whole community is just so excited about Emerson having it. And now... We've had a tremendous response. And, it, and thank you very much to everyone. The response has just been amazing. Lots of support. Uh, lots and lots of support. And then, you know, and, um, you know, John Schneider, hello. That's so awesome. Yes. But I'm telling you, before I even knew John Schneider was in the picture, there was great buzz. Now, John did kind of add we didn't, a little. We didn't know that John was in the buzz <laughs> until he, literally right yeah. there that night. And he stepped out on the deck and said, hey, not only are we doing the breast cancer awareness race, but we're coming back for the cabin fever race. And that was so much fun. And I think that's why a lot why Larry and I were able to become fast friends. <laughs> because like I found out like that Saturday. So I couldn't even really jump in Monday till Monday. And the race was the next Saturday right. to help with media exposure. Right. And so I just completely jumped in. And, you know, they're pretty much booked up at that point. But mm. I was able to find little windows here and you people made room job. there. And, you know, and, you know, got John John on here and there and so forth. And then. All of a sudden, it's race day. Oh, yeah. I slept about 12 hours of the 72 hours leading up to the race, literally. Because you're not from, you're not living in the Chattanooga area or the North Georgia area right now. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. So I come back and forth. Yes. Um, I'm here because my father-in-law is Emerson. And um, I retired and Emerson called and said, hey. We're thinking about, what do you think about buying Boyd Speedway? And I said, that sounds interesting. And he said, no, no, I mean, come on over here. We're going to go look at it, and we're going to buy it, and I want you to run it. Oh, wow. And no, so really, so you hear that. What was your first, were you like, oh, shoot, I'm retired. I, I, can't, say it like, on, I can't say on air exactly <laughs> what my first thought was, but needless to say, it was, oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> That's what I felt. I mean, like, literally, no. people don't realize when, when, you know, when, when Emerson negotiated the deal to buy the track from uh, the Duplissies, 
We closed on the deal exactly four weeks to the first race. So we walked into a racetrack that had no race calendar for 2021, that had no promotional events planned for 2021. Oh, my. That had no employees. I was the first employee. Um, and we had all this work to do to remodel and, you know, change things and create a whole new environment. And literally, I can't think enough the number of contractors and people that came over and worked around the clock to help us. Uh, but it was amazing how it just all came together. And suddenly, there we were. It was race day. And it was a blast. Um, and it, it, it really was. And, you know, it was my first, I mean, I've been to tons of races, but it's been a really long time. And I think I've even, I'm confident I've even been at Boyd's like years and years ago. Mm-hmm. But the, it was just really exciting and fun. And there was such a great energy. And I thought, wow, this is so awesome. But I did not realize until I started talking to other people, like other racers. And they're like, oh, this is special. This is really uh, the buzz, the excitement. Everyone is just super stoked about this season. And so the pressure's on, Larry. <laughs> pressure's on. You know, it's. Uh, I told somebody the other day, uh, you know, we started out first race, largest crowd in the history of Boyd Speedway, largest car count racing in the history of Boyd Speedway. And I said, wow, I'm not sure I want to come back for the next race. How do you, how do you top that, right? But... We've got an exciting lineup planned. Uh, it's a 27 race season. We're really, really, really super excited. We've had a, a number of people start reaching out to us. It's funny, literally, when we started down this track, when we closed on the, on the racetrack, I went out and Googled names of sanctioned race series to start calling and saying, hey, you don't know me? Um, <laughs> But we're about to buy Boyd Speedway, and I want to talk to you about your series coming to race at the track. I cannot imagine, because I'm just learning, like I keep sharing, I'm kind of learning the lay of the land, and I'm you know running a lot of things past you, because I'm starting to figure out how, I, and I know better <laughs> than to call anybody. <laughs> I know anybody, a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> to call anybody green, because you don't know what you don't know. You don't? Uh, but, so let's talk about that a little bit, though, Larry, because... Uh, you know, Emerson Russell, a longtime race fan. Mm-hmm. I think he's even been he behind the wheel of some. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And uh, so where, I mean, so you went to races. I'm sure that was a, a family activity at times. So what was your involvement with racing before uh, this was put on you, <laughs> so to speak? Well, uh, my total experience was um, I drove a car at Talladega in the driving experience, uh, which was a blast. Um, We've gone to races. I mean, that's one of Emerson's big things. Um, He loves to go to the races. So we've we've been to races every year. In fact, we used to go to Bristol Bristol twice a year to the races. Um, But as I told a banker, uh, when we were sitting down and I had the, the model all put together and the presentation for the deal and, uh, the banker said, you know, well, well, what do you know about running a racetrack? And I said, nothing. And his face just sort of went blank and he looked at Emerson and, and, and Emerson said, hang on a second. And I said, but I do not operate a business. And I do understand that, you know, we are in the entertainment business, um, so we've worked incredibly hard. Uh, it's not just me. I certainly don't want to say that, you know, I played a part in it, but there's been a lot of people that have helped me along the way. Oh, I have to. I've, I've got to, like, gush over your, you a little bit, Larry, because, you know, that is the first, like, when you shared your history real quick, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> why is he taking, you know, how's he getting? Then I knew, I knew Emerson's behind you, but it was evident immediately because you remember how I was like, Oh, Larry, I'm going to love working with you because it was evident. I could already tell with some of the things I was like, you were saying, well, this and that you you had that overview. I put together the vision. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you were paying and I just got instant confidence and relief, quite honestly, because it's like I was a little scared for you. That's how I, you know, I'm like, (laughs) how am I? Look what he's taking on. And I'm telling you, that was masterful because I knew how quick y'all put it together. And y'all are like, oh, it'll be better next time. And everybody's like, this is the best ever. <laughs> it's- yeah, it's, it's, it has really been very interesting. It's been an interesting road. I mean, my background, for those of you who don't know what yeah. Cindy's talking about, is um, I came from consumer goods. I've spent most my entire career 
in consumer goods, working for big brands like Fruit of the Loom and Gildan and places like that. So I understand marketing and I understand marketing to consumers and I understand running a business, um, but not a racetrack. And there's a lot of interesting aspects to operating a racetrack that you don't really realize until you get in behind the scenes. You know, it's not just hey, we've got to put together a lineup and I think we'll have five different races on Friday night. And I mean, there's a lot that has to go into the promotional aspect of right. what races will be there, what's the car count going to be, what's the number of people you're going to anticipate, what promotional activities will you have going on at the track? Because from our perspective as owners of the track, it's, we want to be able to please everybody. And pleasing everybody, we've got to be able to create an atmosphere where it's not just dad that wants to come to watch the races. Dad loves to come to watch the races. Right. We've got to create an environment where mom wants to come to watch the races because mom will bring the kids. And the kids at the races are tomorrow's race drivers. There you, oh, isn't that the truth? Wow, that's, that's amazing. And what I loved uh, about this... Um, Exactly. The, yeah, exactly. Zane. We've exactly. And the, well, the Cochrane boys that I just, you know, had the thrill to interview, uh, 19 and 17, and they've been racing like for 10 years. And I'm like, that is so cool. But it's a family it is. activity. So that is so keen to record. This isn't a men's sport. This is a family activity to most of these families. And that's, that's awesome. And that I think that, you know, I like, again, this is all... I'm kind of peeling the onion and, and kind of understanding more layer by layer. And I think that is a lot of the appeal to I, I mean, you know, I'm a hang glider pilot, a mountain bike rider. I love, and quite honestly, I stopped going to races because I wanted a car so bad I could hardly stand it. And I'm like, no, I got I to gotta walk away because I don't need to be doing that. Well, I mean, now I'm like, I just got to, okay, I just have to accept. I'll have to get a car and I'll have to race the enduro because I love the racing, but it does make it extra special. We'll uh, make sure there's extra padding in the enduro car for you. Oh, definitely. I'm already like getting like my own personal gear. We'll pad up the car because I go all out, Larry. (laughs) It's like, it's going to be too much fun, but it does. That's exciting. The sport itself is just so exciting. But when you kind of realize this is a family activity, so it's a family here and um you know sponsors supporting families and families supporting children and it's really a great environment yeah i read a um uh, and going through we're setting up sort of the clothing line and you know i've been reading slogans that people have on shirts and i saw one that really struck me and you know it said on there a lot of people wait their entire life to meet a race car driver i'm raising one i like it that was pretty cool I like it. That's pretty cool when you think about it. Yeah. And and it is. It's, too, uh, it's so amazing to watch you know, them to advance. Like, uh, Canon was advancing, like, to mm-hmm. another faster kind of series. And I'm not understanding all the series yet and so forth. And I'm like, wow. That's pretty exciting to be a part of that kind of watch that evolution with these kids. So I can't wait. I mean, how many more races have we got? Like 26 more. 26. And, and we have uh, an all-star series monster truck event coming in oh August. Oh, my. That should be pretty cool. Last one of those I went to was a big arena in Houston, Texas. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Well, Larry, this is, I and I just have to take this minute, too, because I'm about to hand the wheel over to Larry. I It's a, uh, Cindy's Choice pro- is so proud to be producing this series cindy here and i'll fill in some when it when it's necessary when it's appropriate but i'm handing the wheel over to larry and in very very capable hands but i just am so excited and happy to be a part like i said just it starts with emerson like i was so excited i'm like finally there's something we can do that we you know complements each other uh, with you know it's a just a great exchange that we have i love being a a media i hate calling myself a media sponsor because it's like so much more but that in itself is just thrilling but wow i mean the russell family y'all are just y'all are all of y'all are just 100 percent committed and the energy it's just it's just truly a blessing to be a part of everything that's happening there right every, now. every every single family member at the cabin fever race 
was working in some capacity, whether they were in the concession area, cooking French and working, fries. Working. And working. <laughs> and working. Yes, that's exactly right. Cooking hamburgers. We had, we had family members out on the gates. Um, Riley's family was out working the gates for us. Riley, and he's the actual race manager. That's right. Riley actually manages the track itself. He does the prep of the track, manages the operation of the track, and then I manage the business aspect. And that's amazing because I was up in the control tower a little bit and just watching. I was just fascinated with what it, just that what that part takes. I mean, that's it's a full hundred percent focused. Ooh. In the zone, I stayed out of their way. I'm like, you know, because I'm yes. around stuff enough to know. I'm like, they are in the zone. There's a lot going on here. And um, getting to hang out with uh, Steve Milling, the announcer, mm-hmm. a little bit. Great, Great announcer. Guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Great guy. So, I, and I'm just really excited. Cause like, this is what y'all threw together really quick. And it's going to be exciting now that we're collaborating and, uh, you know, putting creative heads together and coming up with more really fun stuff. And uh, so you just have to keep tuning in. Keep tuning in to the Boyd Speedway podcast produced by Cindy's Choice. And this has been Cindy. And uh, tune in also to the Cindy's Choice podcast. We compliment a lot, too, of what they're doing over there at Boyd's constantly uh, expanding the platform to help however we can. But I'm handing the wheel over to Larry. It's it's yours to drive I'm try now. Try not you to can, crash at turn one. You, uh, he's a natural. He's, <laughs> Larry's an absolute natural, authentic. That authenticity is the key, and uh, you're a truly authentic guy. And you have a really good lineup of guests already. We so, do. We have a great one coming up next. We'll have uh, Zane, ten year old. I mean, ten year old. Imagine that a ten year old driving down the straightaway. You know, in a race, doing eighty miles an hour on that straightaway. At 10 years old, I was trying to figure out, could I get my bicycle to jump a hill? Yeah, Much I remember, less climb yeah. inside a race car. I remember my big, yeah, that's what I was riding, a big purple banana seat bicycle. It wasn't. <laughs> and your reference about families, I mean, that's a family situation there. We're one family, Zane's family, and then Danielle's family. You know, they're intertwined, taking each other to events. Yes. And she's in the 11th grade. She should be thinking about going to the prom or to... The homecoming for the football oh, season. That and girl's she's building, out driving a race car. She's she's building some confidence. It's going to come out real empowered. I, I love the track, pardon the pun, pun that she's on. Well, I just awesome. want to know. I just want to know if if Danielle gets in Zane's way, will Zane bump her out of the way to win the race? Well, <laughs> that'll be one. To, that's what's going to get fun is when you get, get when I kind of get to start knowing the racers. Mm-hmm. That's always fun. But I do have to mention one more thing before we close out here because, you know, I got to hang. We hung out all night to watch the Enduro race. Yes. And that was an absolute If you haven't blast. seen one, those are the most exciting races to watch. And there's several of those planned throughout. There are. In fact, the next race on March the 13th, the Shamrock race, we have an Enduro race to finish the night. So uh, you could have a car by then. You got four that's weeks. That's what that grin I just gave you, what's, what that was from. Like, get a car I gotta, ready. I got to get me a car. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's always it's always hard to close because we just enjoy the conversation so much, but there'll be more conversations to come. You just have to keep tuning in to the Boyd Speedway podcast produced by Cindy's Choice. And this is Cindy, so enjoying my conversation and, and this uh, collaboration with Larry Dismukes and the Russell family, uh, that the new owners, operators of Boyd Speedway. I was about to say podcast again, Boyd Speedway. Mm. And we look forward to everything that's to come, Larry. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in to the Boyd Speedway podcast brought to you by Cindy's Choice. We'll see you next time.